Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and we welcome you to the Chumash Casino Resort here in Santa Ynez, California. Well, fans, we have a big night of action coming your way at Showbox, the new generation. And it's all brought to you by Gary Shaw Productions in association with the Santa Ynez Band of Chumash Indians and Showtime. Tonight's bouts, ladies and gentlemen, are sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission. The chairman is Sanford Michaelman, executive director Rob Lynch. Judging at ringside for this bout, we have Abe Ballardo, Ralph McKnight, and David Mendoza. And our third man of the ring, the referee in charge of the action is Ray Corona. All right, fans, here we go with our welterweight special attraction scheduled for eight rounds of boxing. Introducing to you first on my right, he is fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing black trunks, he weighed in at 144 pounds. His record stands at nine wins, three losses, with six wins coming by way of knockout from Santa Maria, California. Introducing Jose Antonio El Monarca. And his opponent across the ring on my left, fighting out of the red corner, the state round attraction, wearing yellow, black, and red trunks, and he weighed in at 145 pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign to the ring with 10 wins, no losses, seven wins coming by way of knockout from Kampala, Uganda. Please welcome the African Iceman, Mohamed Kayongo. Once again, a referee in charge, Ray Corona, now to give instructions. Eight rounds of boxing scheduled. Take this off. Take this off. This is good right here. Yeah. This is Taviana Key, huh? Yeah. Listen to my commands. Touch gloves. Touch gloves. Touch those gloves. Come on, guys. Okay. God bless. Let's get going. Let's go. Our all fight, weight card here in San Ynez, California. Mohamed Kayongo, gold and red. Cautiously coming out. The little film we saw him, Steve. A safety first guy, but a lot more conviction already on those jabs as he comes, comes in smoking as Ojeda tries to get into this fight just seconds in. Yeah, this, this is the unveiling of Kayongo. I mean, people don't know this guy. He's been fighting mostly in Minnesota around there. And we're anxious to see him because the only video we saw was like a mom and pop video, and, you know, taken from about nine million miles away from the ring. And uh, he looked pretty good, but he looked cautious. Let's see if he fights aggressively. Very slow, cautious, but a good body puncher, and he's showing it here and really drilling the jab nicely as Ojeda, the corner, when they talked to us, said, you know, Ojeda just can't come in as recklessly. It's got to be smart aggression, so try to figure this guy out. But there goes Ojeda with a blistering left hook that sails just a little short. But there goes the body punching from Kayongo. He's undefeated, 10 and 0, from Uganda. Tony Ojeda, for one of the few times we've ever seen Steve, forced to back up a little bit. Usually he is coming forward. He's all pressure. Well, you, you said it. You sure this is Tony Ojeda, <laughs> no twin brother or something? Because he's been involved in brawls on Showbox. He's been involved in brawls on cards that where we didn't televise his fights. And I'll tell you, if he's trying to be cautiously aggressive, whatever that means, uh, it might not be his style, and it, he could be really hurting his chances of winning. Ojeda has started slow in his career. He has three losses, but why not take a round to figure this guy out? He is the great unknown, the African. As you said, Steve, we hardly know anything about him. That's the, that's the boxing world. Here comes Ojeda trying to open up a little bit as we approach the minute mark here in round one of a scheduled eight rounder, a distance neither guy has ever been. Now it's Ojeda at least trying to stick the jab in, and that's what they want him to do. African trying to go to the body. Now you see Ojeda turned pro in 2000. That's very deceptive because he took three years off, and that's why Kayango has really caught up to him in terms of experience. Come on, Tony! Tony Ojeda has definitely the crowd favorite. He's from nearby Santa Maria, California, about 30 miles up the California coast. 
Produce worker by day, boxer by night, a very disciplined guy. Has trouble getting good sparring, but he knows he's got to get the superior gym work to stay in this game and really begin to make a splash. And this could be his coming out party. But he's in deep, according to some people, against the African. Ten seconds, stop in the build. Look for Ojeda to drop his left hand after he jabs. Payango counting on that. They felt the straight right, the counter right, would be the big punch. And the left connects from the Africa just before the bell. All right. Good round. I got it, Tom. No, he needs it on his knees right away. Okay, good round. Nice deep go. breath. Here we go. Sit back. You can handle the water. All right. You got that bucket, bucket Jimmy? Jimmy? That's all right, yeah. Nice deep breath. Good round. All right, you're working the jam good. Don't let him come forward. Keep backing him up. Feed that jab. Feed that jab. Throw it right. Throw the right hand right to the chest. He's ducking. Throw it right to the chest. As I said, we see action from round one. Kayunga counting, and look away that jab. Well, actually, Ojeda tried to double jab, and before he could throw his second jab, boom, he got hit with the right hand, the best punch of the round. And based on that alone, Kayango took the round. Real, really can't fault uh, Tony Ojeda on that, at least trying to throw punches in combination, and doubling the jab is always a good idea. But Steve, I agree, in the fight we did see in the corner, the, agreed with us at the fighters' meetings, he does have a tendency to get a little lazy with that left hand. And, doesn't Kayunga know it? Mohamed Kayunga in the gold and red. Now lives in St. Paul, Minnesota. Is from the capital city, Kampala, Uganda. Antonio Heda, the local favorite. And probably, the, uh, I would say, unarguably, the biggest fight of his young career. Ojeda's in black. Hands high, elbows in. And doubling the jab again, getting away with it there. Kayango gets stuffed by a right, straight right hand from Ojeda, who begins to move forward a little bit into some firepower from the African. Don't push, don't push. It punches once, punched together. That's Ojeda trying to muscling Kayango away and restart. Nice overhand right from Kayango. Nick, if, if this is a boxing match, I can't see Kayungo losing. No offense to Ojeda, but we like Tony Ojeda because he has been in brawls, and he needs to brawl. His people told us that they're trying to control his emotions in the ring. Again, that's a double-edged sword because if he controls his emotions too much, he's too passive, and then he has no chance to win. Yeah. Seems like he's working up a little bit here, Steve, in round two. As he's coming forward now, he's backing the African up for the first time in this fight. There's Ojeda, hands down, sort of daring the thing going to come at him, putting some punches together. And now beginning to dial in offensively on this fight. Kayunga trying an uppercut counter that missed as the action picks up here in round two. And it's scheduled for eight, so you can't afford to blow any rounds, Steve. Well, that's for sure. It took about two and a half minutes of the first round for Ojeda to get into his rhythm where he established himself as the pressure fighter in this matchup. That's what he is now. But Kayango is making it difficult because he's boxing and he's showing some movement left and right. Gee, the jab fest is easily won by the African. He's really sticking that jab and trying a combination coming in behind it, working off it. Ojeda's jab seemed a little bit sloppy, and he's having trouble really finding the mark and streamlining those shots. Big left hook sends Ojeda reeling backwards as he wisely holds on with half a minute to go. Wow, that was something, because he came out of nowhere, and that's the first time he tried to lead hook. Ojeda wasn't ready for it. And there goes the hook again. Ojeda digging right hands, trying to crease the body of Ojeda. Now Ojeda's got it. Seems a little bit flustered, but he's definitely in this fight and wants to fight back and give the African something in return. He's settled, seems to have his legs at, from, uh, belt, back under him. But he had him take, taken away there as he was staggered yeah, halfway yeah. across the ring. Work. Well, about 40 seconds to go in this round. Breathe. Yeah. 
<laughs> you gotta get inside and start using. As was the case in round one, one punch. Lead left hook, and you saw Ojeda setting to punch, dropped his right hand just a little bit. And that was really kind of a roundhouse left hook, as you could see. Did Kayango let that left hook go because he saw Ojeda drop his glove? I don't think so. I think it was just timing that worked out well, fortuitously for Kayango. We hit the third round. Mohamed Kayango, the strategy, Steve, was we're not going to have to look for Tony Ojeda. He's going to be there. But Willie Flores, Ojeda's corner, wants his man to close the gap and get in there. So how does he get in there without getting hit? He's got to <laughs> use some head movement and... Yeah, feign his way forward and feign his way and jab his way in. It's not going to be easy because Kayongo is waiting with that big right hand. But yes, Ojeda needs to get close so he can bang the body, limit the movement, and turn this into a brawl. Showing a much better jab here as Ojeda in the black early in this round three as he was rocked in the third round. He's been down before, Steve. Yeah, Ojeda's been down twice. Kayongo never been down. But again, this is a big step up for Kayongo. He hasn't really fought anybody. And we know Ojeda's tough, if nothing else. Kayango looks good, Nick. I'm impressed so far. It's early, but I'm really impressed in his... Uh, Fundamentally solid, huh? Yeah, and, he, and he's controlling the pace and the tempo of the fight. Getting away with some wild stuff, though, I see. Uh, right hand missed by a mile again. He's missed with some big left hooks. And Ojeda unable to follow up with there. Cracking nicely and trying to fire combinations, following up. Yeah, best punch so far. And now Ojeda wants the ball, and he's getting it. And the African opens his mouth as he wants Ojeda. Now we got a fight. I like that little attitude from Kayango. But let's see emotionally what happens with Tony Ojeda. He's fighting under control and not being induced into a brawl. But he is moving forward the way his corner wants him and now landing. Avoiding shots there nicely. Crowd yelling Tony and he obliges. Putting together the shots now with his best offensive fireworks of the Watch night. Your hands, your head, be careful. Let's see if Kayango could resettle himself. Yeah, the momentum torn away from him here in round three. Nothing serious, Steve, but he gets cracked with a little left hook from close range. Ojeda with his hands down inside. Trying to thread the needle with that right. Good action from Ojeda, I'll tell you. He wasn't in this fight. He wasn't landing anything significant. This round, he's landed about six solid shots. Yes, that left landed as well. And I think really doing a smooth transition, Steve. He's, as offensive as he's been, he's transitioning back to defense nicely. So he's really controlled this entire round. Boy, a little dangerous coming in a long range with that uppercut. And counterpunch to Ojeda, counterpunch with the left hook. <laughs> Nicely done. One thing I don't like about Ojeda, he's showing his mouthpiece a lot. Is he breathing through his mouth because he's tired? Or I don't know what it is, but it's dangerous to do. Short Ten punches seconds. there has had Mohamed Kayango backing up, avoiding a whistling left hook there. But Ojeda solidly into this fight now as he takes Stop. this third round. Boxing fans will want to be watching Friday night, July 30th, when Mike Tyson thunders back into the heavyweight picture on Showtime pay-per-view. Tyson returns after 17 months away and takes on former British and Commonwealth champion Danny Williams in Louisville, Kentucky, in a bout scheduled for 10 rounds or less. Be watching the return of Mike Tyson, Friday night, July 30th, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, only on Showtime pay-per-view. That will be then, Friday, July 30th. This is now Santa Ynez, California. We got a fight, Steve. We did, do indeed, and Ojeda all of a sudden in round three starts landing. Kayango came back, but you know what? He left himself open and Ojeda counted with that left hook. It was a good round for Ojeda. I, I, I don't think it's so much a case of the distance of the two closing as it was Ojeda just turned it up a notch. Sure did. Ojeda's in the black, the crowd solidly behind him. He's a local guy. Second appearance on Showbox, and Mohamed Kayongo from Uganda. First appearance on national television. He wants to sparkle, as anybody does. But now he's getting blasted back again by Ojeda. 
Oh, hey, to get physical too, a good idea. Exactly, shaking off the African. Now it looks like Mohamed Kayanga a little bit reticent and wary as he comes in, not taking the liberties he did in the opening moments of this fight. He needs to establish that jab, it seems, Steve. He really was smoking it early. Well, that's a good point, Nick, and I'm wondering why he's not scoring with it. I think it's because Ojeda has that very high guard, and, uh, and Kayango's not jabbing between. Good idea is the lead punch to the body, but you, can get, but you can get countered with that, right? which he did too. So Is Ojeda fast enough to counter, do you think? Well, he's I shown last round. I think he is. He has adequate speed, I think. I agree with you. Ojeda tries the chopping overhand right. Kayango moving around the ring now, drilling him with a nice left, followed by that right hand, tries again. Real nice streamlined shots again from Mohamed Kayango. But Ojeda pressing forward, eats a jab on the way in. Tries an overhand right. Hands are up, his elbows trying to protect those ribs. He knows Kayango sees a target in the midsection. 95% of Kayango's movement is to the left. That should make it easier for Ojeda, huh? Yeah, to cut off the ring. Ojeda trying to double the jab, missing with the right, failing to measure. Kayunga, who really comes, rears back with that right hand and fires. Just unloads it nicely. Kayunga bouncing off the ropes, bad place to be. He spins out of danger, and now they're in the center again. Minute to go in round four as we approach the halfway mark. Tony Ojeda definitely pulled his way back into this fight after certainly losing the second round, we would say the first, Steve. Oh, I think so, yeah. This is a close one, though. This last uh, 40 seconds could be pivotal. Vital, vital for an eight-rounder. Oh, nice counter from Ojeda as he spun nicely away from that left hook of Kayango and countered with a left of his own. Kayunga cracking to the body, but backing up as Ojeda has forced him to fight off the back leg. Ojeda rocketing those little shots in close. He's inside where he wants to be. We've completed four of eight, Steve, and halfway home, how do you see it? I gave Ojeda that round. I got a dead even Me round too. of peace. You're losing the fight. Okay, nice deep breath. Okay. Here we go. Here we go, Pat. Okay. Can't let him come forward like that. You can't move away from him like that. You got to go side to side. You got to hit him hard with the jab. Got to throw that right hand right away. You got to come back with a hook. Lean back. Lean back. Are they okay? Everything good. good. Yeah. Okay. Now. Action from round four. Watch Kayango. He's at a distance. One, two, simplest combination in boxing. Later in the round, all right, that's the same punch. And again, Tony Ojeda's gloves a little too low because he was starting to punch himself. And here's Ojeda slipping, left hook counter. It really, there wasn't a lot on that shot, but Kayango was off balance and he fell backward. But you know, that impresses the judges. So uh, I think Ojeda did enough to win that round there. Yeah. And Kayango's corner telling him, basically, you gotta beat this guy to the punch. And he hadn't been doing it lately. Well, you know, he throws some really nice looking punches, but a lot of times he's thrown them from too far away. And it's almost as if he's a fighter in conflict with himself. Does he want to come forward so that he has the right distance to throw those punches, or does he want to box, and then he has to worry about being too far away? I don't know if he's come up with a comfortable answer for himself in that regard yet. And we could talk a little bit more about his movement. They want more lateral movement out of him. As you said, he's predictably going left again, and Ojeda is finding him. Very true. The other thing Kayango has to learn to do is how to punch to the body, especially with lead shots, without getting countered. It's not an easy thing to do because, uh. obviously, you drop your hands when you punch to the body, leaving your chin exposed. Ojeda just using the jab, basically, to touch his man and get him to move back and then try to fire that right. There's a rear body shot from Ojeda. Kayango with his left low. As he doubles the jab himself, low blow, Stop. and he really hey, hurt Ojeda there. Keep him up. That was low. You hear me? You're, hey, no more chances on that. Look at me. No more chances. Hey, I'm taking a point. You okay? Let's go. I'll do it again. Ojeda's mad. 
I would. Yeah, he hit the target there, Steve. Oh yeah, yeah. That was <laughs> that was a straight left hand. Ada. Hands high. See if he gets his offense and tries to answer back. Ayungo misses wildly with that right. Ojeda unable to follow. He's in black, chasing down Muhammad Tayango. Well, Tayango's getting the best work. Whoa, big right hand by Tayango there. Came back nicely, started with a right butt to the body. He's getting the best work of his young career, Tayango. He came out to the West Coast a couple of weeks early to get some better sparring. Hard to get good sparring in St. Paul, Minnesota. He's still working with Cosme Rivera, who's a world-rated welterweight in L.A. Shouldn't the African tee off if Ojeda isn't punching? He's well, he's, he's starting loading right up. Now, yeah. Just wonder if that low blow, how much it's got on Tony Ojeda. Didn't take any recovery what, time. Gentlemen? He seemed more angry than hurt. Right. Easy for me to say. <laughs> Fighting at a pretty good clip here in the fifth round. Stare down there. Le vas a ganar. Pero si te esperas, le estás dando chance. Papi, le chance. Pero no lo dejes que se crezca ya, papi. Ya lo tienes. Okay. Okay, mijo. No lo dejes que se crezca el güey. Adentro, papá, adentro. El vato no sabe qué hacer adentro, papá. Okay. Action from round five, Tony Ojeda, two jabs. And look how he got inside. That's why people all, the experts always say, work behind the jab when you're a pressure fighter. You see how he got close by working behind the jab. And that makes Kayango spin out, use up energy doing it. And here's the low blow. Left hand, whoa, was that low. I think it hit him, hit him in the ankle, Nick. What do you think? <laughs> Right, Might have been so low that it wasn't low. Mm -hmm. Keep him up. One more second chance. Get back. Get back. Let's go. In the sixth, and Steve for young, both young fighters, of course, but for Kayango, big storyline for him. Hey, he's going to read his guy and be able to adjust. He's got to make some adjustments, in my opinion, although I believe he could have won that last round. But it's a very close fight. Yeah, and it's only an eight rounder, as you uh, mentioned before, Nick, which makes this very interesting because neither guy could take a round off, give a round away. They really have to work. And, and I'd like to see what would happen if Kayango dedicates himself to coming forward. Well, maybe we just found the answer. He got hit by the left hook. Yeah. He stopped punching. Had the jab and then the right hand, but just laid there in limbo and got clocked. I mean, he's the more mobile fighter. He has the better rhythm. You can see that. But again, it just doesn't, he doesn't seem comfortable when he's coming forward. And then he's too far outside to punch. He landed a jab there, but Ojeda comes back with one of his own. Good combination from the African. Yeah, one, two, left, right. Fires and gets out. So these are the kind of adjustments. Again, beating Ojeda to the punch. Not getting out of the way of that right hand. Ojeda trying the same strategy as you mentioned. The jab doesn't really have to, you don't have to drill it. Just get it and get it in your opponent's eyes and set up that right hand. No, 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 no. Stop boxing, taste of that. Kayango yesterday told us Ojeda has no defense. Well, Ojeda's not getting hit that much, so uh, he has to have some defense. Those high gloves are negating Kayango's jab to a large degree. Here comes Ojeda again. And, you know, the reach is equal, but Ojeda is very short with a lot of his shots. Yeah, and the reason for that is Kayango's movement there. Ojeda has to be set to punch. And if he's hitting a moving target, he's not going to land. Mayunga thumping that right to the body. Started upstairs. So doubling the right hand effectively. And Ojeda not cracking through in this round. And there for the first time, right followed by left to the jaw. As Ojeda has his ambition back offensively. Work, gentlemen, work! 
now turning into a closer round. Nice right hand from Ojeda as he's got his man against the ropes, but swings him back into the middle. Nick, is it too early to... Whoa! Oh, he, Ojeda walked into a combination again. Sure did. I was going to say, is it too <laughs> early to start thinking about whether this pro Ojeda crowd will have any subconscious uh, effect on the judges? I was just thinking about it myself. Now, there's no doubt who won this round. Triangle's landed three big right hands, and uh, that's Ten been seconds, enough. Ten seconds, gentlemen. Stop at the bell. And it could be crucial as we head to the end of the sixth. Two to go here in our opening bout. It's an all welterweight card. And the right hand, Hayango Boy, when Ojeda is open to be hit, boy, is he open to be hit. And it's been the right hand of Kayango. If he wins this fight, that would be the reason. But again, a great point you mentioned, Steve. Kayango just not being a target most of the time. And it is moving. Now he's moving to the right, sticks the right hand. Feeling not that he. How does he, it, not that he has a safe lead by any means, but maybe taking a few less chances. How do you have it after six? 58-56, Kayango has given him the last two rounds in this fight. Nobody's been down in the fight, but Tony Ojeda was staggered in that second round by a booming left hook from Mohamed Kayango in red and gold. Kayango scores and gets out. I tell you, Nick, great matchmaking by Tom and Al Brunette for Kayango. They saw something in Ojeda. They said, this is the guy we want to make our move against. And they understood how big a fight this was for their guy. And style-wise, Ojeda, in a lot of ways, is bringing out the best in Kayango. What are some of the ways? Well, he's an aggressive fighter, and Kayango's being able to show his movement, his hand speed, and on occasion, his timing. And also, Steve, he's not been as cautious as we had previously been led to believe he would be. Oh, he walked into a nice punch there. It didn't stun the African, but it did move him back as he wants to swap some shots. And Ojeda is inviting him to start the war. Maybe that's the mistake. He shouldn't be waiting. He should be dropping those cluster bombs. And both fighters, Nick, in virgin territory. Neither guy's ever been past six. Get off his head, work. We're in round seven now. Doesn't seem to be a problem. Now they look pretty fresh, wouldn't you say? Yeah. And a pretty good clip. Water weight bout. Ojeda in black has to do more to get into this fight. It's probably close, but the consensus is he's behind as he eats a right hand and letting Kayunga escape as he tries to wrestle him. Take a step back. Ray Corona, the referee, doing an excellent job. Yeah, and the fighters are letting it be an easy fight for the referee, too. You haven't seen any clinches. I mean, not one. Good right hand from Kayanga. Not tremendous pop at times. Now there, when he is able to wind up and unload, he sits down a little bit more in the punches because Ojeda's not coming back with anything. I'll tell you, you have to ask about Kayanga. He's fighting a guy who's been down three times in his career. And Kayango's hitting him with right hands, and uh, nothing's happening. One round to figure it out, Tony Ojeda. How much? This is the last one. This is the last one. Papa, you know that you don't do anything when you attack? Tony, are you listening? Mira que no hace nada. No. Ya estuvo, papi. Ya. Y luego ya es Tony. Él ya está pegado. We're gonna touch gloves the last round, okay? Excellent fight. Gracias, Tony. Él está pegado por mí. Wait, Mohamed. Nice deep breath. You're alright. Some more. You wanna Jimmy. win this fight? You wanna win this fight? Yeah. Work. One, two, one, two. Okay, go to work. I don't want you to wait for him. Chígalo, cabrón. Pégale acá abajo, Tony. Métete para adentro. Pégale aquí abajo, ¿eh? Okay, you got to let the right hand go, Mohammed. Right away. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
Three minutes to go in this one. Tony Ojeda in black. Needs something big. And there, Kayamba opens up, rattling a combination off Ojeda and moving back in a safety first pose now. Work, gentlemen, work. Well, Jimmy Montoya great, great helping out in uh, <laughs> He's a Kayamba's corner. <laughs> He's worked about a million and a half corners in his life, most of them in California, and he really did some cheerleading in that corner. Work. It's been a good one, Nick. You know, a really interesting clash of styles and, and a step up go for Kayamba. He's had mixed results. Sorry. Yes, and a, a step up attempt for Tony Ojeda, a big one, and not succeeding. Not that he's fought badly, but a bit outclassed in this one. Well, you know what? He's, he's been the aggressor. But the judges have to measure whether it's been effective aggressiveness. And even when Ojeda's been marching forward, He's been beaten to the punch. Right. And he's missed a lot. For the most part. He's had his moments and he's having another one right now. This is his round so far. But he's missing so many of the shots and then he... So the judges must be seeing that as well. But you're right. I agree. He is winning this round. Will it be enough? Here comes Ojeda trying to open up with both guns. And the African wisely backs off. Tries some wild shots of his own. But Tony Ojeda has to rev it up here. He's got a little over a minute to go. Work, gentlemen. But it isn't as if Kayungo's corner thought their man was running away with this one. Now, this is a reasonably close fight. And if Ojeda, boy, Ojeda's having a good last round, I think. Kayango have enough left on that right hand to land one big one and turn the round around, if not the fight around. He's trying. Oh. Work, gentlemen, work. Don't push him. Well, you can see Kayango, how he thinks. He moves, he moves, he moves. Once he stops moving, you know he's loading up with that right hand. The African coming in and now tries to muscle him, pushing him off. He's got to get the offensive gear. Mohamed Kayango content to maybe Ten give this seconds, round away and play safety first as we wind it down here in San Diego. Close round, close fight. Not the way you'd want to see it finish. No knockdowns, relatively close. And how do you have it, Steve? I have Kayango winning 77-75. So basically five, three in rounds. Huh? Yeah, yeah, so you score one round different and we're dead even. You okay? Good job, good job. That was you, baby, all the way, that was you. You're proud, man. Look good. We'll find out in a little while whether the eighth round was pivotal or not, but I'll tell you what, both guys were fresh, fired a lot of shots. They were slapping a little bit in the eighth round, part of that from fatigue, part of it from just trying to score. That was a close round, close fight. Yeah. I do think Kayango's right hand was the difference. difference. A lot of swings and misses there down the stretch, as you said. There's Kayango. And again, uh, no excuses, but fact. Between these guys, 22 professional no, no, fights. Really... Here we go, here we go, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> as we await the decision, Mohamed Kayango, Tony Ojeda, once again, he is the local guy. There's Kayongo with Jimmy Montoya. That's it, nice and easy, Mom. There you go. And? Nice job. Good fight. As we get ready for the decision, let's go up to Jimmy Lennon Jr. 
Ladies and gentlemen, after eight rounds of action, we go to the scorecard with a majority decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, A. Bellardo scores about 77 to 75 in favor of Ojeda. Yeah. Judges at ringside, Ralph McKnight and David Mendoza both score with about 76 to 76, even a draw. The decision is a majority draw. Yeah.